Hey guys and girls, it's Devin from 918 Software. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna look at a formula for batch gradient descent, make sure that we understand the formula. B, we're gonna look at a Python implementation for the same. And C, we're gonna look at some code that animates using matplotlib. So when you first open the notebook, and by the way, I've shared it on GitHub and there's a link in the description, you'll see this formula, which I pulled from a Google Images search. Now, if you've never taken statistics or calculus, some of the math notation might look a bit daunting, but since I covered these symbols in a previous video, I'm not gonna say anything more about it here, other than, you know, there's more information if you open up the notebook. Okay, so here we have an implementation of gradient descent that is um, basically a translation from the formula to Python code. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is we're trying to find the best fit line through a matrix of points. Notice that there are two gradient variables called grade zero, grade one. To calculate gradient, we need to take the change in the y-coordinate and divide it by the change in the x-coordinate. So grade zero represents the change in y and grade one represents the change in x. Keep in mind that m is the length of the vector x. It's also the length of the vector y, since they have to be the same length. So we're not just calculating a single point or a single xy value here with each iteration of the for loop. We're summing over the entire series of x and y with each iteration. And what's happening here in the sum function anyway? This is a partial derivative calculation, but you don't really have to know the details if you're willing to just accept that this is the formula needed. With each iteration, after calculating the gradient, we update a temp theta. Again, two variables making up the slope. Then we update t0, t1 to the temp values. This uh, assigning to temp first and then updating theta is actually important. If you want to learn more about why, go watch Andrew Ng's video on the topic. I want to point out that the array named changes has nothing to do with gradient descent or the algorithm at all. Uh, it was just something added by me to keep a list of the intermediate thetas so that I could use the results in an animation after we achieve convergence. Here we see the calc for getting the mean squared error, and here we check to see if the total error minus the error is less than EP, which is the value that we're willing to accept as the minimum. And if so, then we're done. We're converged. This function returns the final t0, t1, or the gradient, as the result. And I'm also returning, as I mentioned before, this third variable changes uh, for use in this next step. Now that we have a function, let's call it with some randomly generated points. I plot them right away to give you an idea of the structure, and you could already intuitively see how a best fit line would likely appear through this series of dots. In the next cell, we include animation from matplotlib and also HTML from IPython display so that we can play back the video showing how our slope moves during each iteration. We get our random points, we call gradient descent, uh, we'll get a print line showing how many iterations it took before it converged, and then finally we see a little HTML5 video. I could have spent a little more time dressing this up, but for now I hope I've provided enough context to help you have a slightly better grasp of how one jumps from formula to Python implementation to animation.